To determine the issue with your F20 pump, there's a couple things we can look at. To start, you'll want to make sure that you have the following tools available. A mallet, a 3mm Allen wrench, a 3 16 inch socket with quarter inch drive, 3 8 inch ratchet with half inch socket, and a torque wrench that reads in inch pounds. To start, we'll need to remove the motor from the pump. We remove the motor from the pump by removing the bolts that are located on the face of the motor. Of the bolts that you just removed, you're going to find a threaded hole on the bottom of the pump, and you're going to start threading one of those bolts into that hole, and you're going to repeat that process on the other side as well. By doing this, you're going to use these bolts to separate the pump from the motor. And you're going to go back and forth until the bolts and cells bottom out. This is where we're going to take the mallet. Okay. Once you've, you've separated the plate from the motor and the pump, you can take the mallet to gently separate the two. Before you remove the pump from the motor, it's a good idea to mark the top here and the top of the plate here so that when you go to put the two pieces back together because these are separate, you'll know how to line them up. There won't be any confusion. Once you've marked them, you can remove the motor from the pump and remove the screws from the flange that hold the plate to the pump. Now that we've separated the two, you can see the inside of the pump. If the issue is with the lip seal, which is in here, there should be traces of oil. And there should also be traces of oil in the shaft. If the leak has been occurring for a while and you've continued to run the pump, there may nevertheless be oil within here and it may be hard to distinguish whether that's the issue. So we'll look at a couple more things. To determine if the problem is with the o-rings, you'll want to remove the screws that hold the end plate to the pump.
You can see from the configuration of the screws that they should be a solid piece and look like this. If for some reason as you're unscrewing them you find any of them have separated, this would cause the o-ring to be exposed and could potentially be the cause of the leak. So keep an eye out for that. Once you've removed the screws, you can go ahead and remove the base plate. The easiest way to do that is to take two of these bolts, re-thread them back in, and just gently pull. If the O-rings are the issue, in this case there would be oil around the screws. So if you don't find that, then we will look at a third option. Which is this O-ring here. So these are what may need to be replaced if they look deteriorated or if you were seeing oil around any of the screws. Iterate, if the problem is with the lip seal, you should see oil around here in the shaft. If it is this, the bearing will need to be pressed out and you should give me a call and we can discuss options for that. Next, if it's not the lip seal, check the large o-ring for any deterioration as well as the o-rings on each of the screws. If those look deteriorated or cracked or broken, that's potentially an issue. You'll also want to check the structure of the pump for any cracks or anything that doesn't look like it's intact. And finally, make sure that when the screws are in place that they are each tightened to 14 inch pounds. That could also be the source of the issue if as you're taking them out you notice any of them are loose, tighten them first. And finally, since you already have it unassembled at this point, it may be a good idea to go ahead and replace the large o-ring um, just to check to see if that potentially solves the problem as well. And so now we'll go back over how to reassemble the pump. Cleaning your o-ring of any debris. And just simply reattaching it to the bearing case. We're then going to place this case back in, aligning the holes, and it should drop right in place. And then you'll proceed to do the same with these O-rings. Check them to make sure there's no debris. And then reattach. So now I'm just gently tightening each one of these bolts in kind of a cross pattern. Now we'll do the same with the torque wrench that is set to 14 inch pounds. Then you'll reattach the plate. You're going to find your line and you're going to match that line up to one that you placed on the other side. And then reattach. 
attach Allen head screws. And again, just for redundancy's sake, go through and tighten each one just to be sure. Now your pump is completely reassembled. At this point you're going to attach it back to the motor and you're going to look for your key on your shaft, place that face up. And you're going to do the same with the key slot and then just gently realign. Take note of when you are sliding this back into place that the key that is attached to the shaft does not slide. If it does do that you'll have to put a screwdriver in there to keep it from moving backwards. And then you can just gently tap it with your mallet. Tap your bolt. Make sure your lock washers are in place. Hopefully this helps you troubleshoot the issue that you're having with your pump. And if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to contact us.